Now we will see how to handle time delay systems using RH criteria. So what is a time delay system? So take this example. So I have a liquid level system uh, where I have this tank. So I have uh, some level and there is some inflow and outflow. So when you model the system in terms of the capacities and everything, then let us say the model gives like this g of s is equal to k by 1 plus st. Now this inlet uh, for this tank I have an inlet pipe with length L. So if you want to include the length of the pipe into the model then what happens? So actually the input to this particular system will be here say it is t is equal 0 applying input but when you add the pipe you are adding the pipe therefore you should take the input from here so when you take the input from here here you should take t is equal 0 but it takes time if whatever the uh, liquid whatever the fluid which is flowing in this pipe or whatever the material which is flowing or whatever the energy which is flowing so from this point to this point some time lag will be there or it is called transportation lag, transportation of the material, transportation of the energy. So due to this, in the model, we will have extra parameter. That extra parameter is E power minus STD. So where TD is nothing but the delay time, depends on what will be the length of it, what will be the flow rate of the material here. And depending upon those things, we will be having TD, that is time delay. So such systems are called time delay systems or sometimes called dead time systems or transportation lag systems. So in control systems, especially process systems, time delay systems are quite natural. So still there are open problems on uh, time delay systems where uh, research is going on time delay systems, how to find uh, new controllers to uh, deal the time delay systems. If the time delay is a very small, it is okay. If the time delay is large, then it creates a lot of problem in the system. Now, so it, uh, when it comes to the Routh Harwich criteria, how to handle the system? So what I can do is we have E power minus STD term for low frequencies because all process systems are low frequency systems 1 e power minus std can be approximated as uh, 1 minus std so it is the approximation we have other approximation part a approximation other approximation also there but very simple approximation 1 plus std so wherever e power minus st is there 1 minus std we should assume and uh, we find out the characteristic equation then we can form Routh array, then you can say what is the system nature, whether it is stable, unstable or marginally stable. So to understand this, let us take this example. The example problem statement is like this. A feedback control system is characterized by the open loop transfer function GH of S is equal to K into E power minus STD divided by S into S square plus 5S plus 9. Find the range of K for system stability A, TD is equal to 0, B, TD is equal to 1 second. Which means uh, in this problem, I want to uh, just test, I want to see the effect of the transportation lag or the effect of the time delay TD. So first case I am taking TD is 0 which means there is no time delay in the system. Second case, I am taking TD is equal to 1 second. We will see what are the effects uh, when you introduce TD is 1 second in the system. So the first one we can easily solve. Uh, let us take the characteristic equation. What will be the characteristic equation when TD is equal to 0? It is going to be 1 plus GH is 0. Okay. So when you write the characteristic equation, it is S square plus uh, 5S square plus 9S plus K is equal to 0 then we can easily form the Routh array because it is S cube, S cube, S square, S power 1, S power 0. Then what are the elements of first two rows? Directly I can write from the equation. It is 1, I have 5, 9, K. So uh, I can get this 9 into 5 minus K divided by 9. That means 9 minus K by 5 and this 5 is carried forward to here. That is a 5. So what are the first column elements? The first column elements are 1, 
5, 9 minus k by 5, five uh, uh, last level we have k. Then uh, to find the range of k, uh, you should not have any sign change in the first column, which means uh, we should have all positive values. So when you will get the positive value, let us take the condition from here, k must be greater than 0. That is the one condition. Second condition is this 9 minus k by 5 must be greater than 0. So you will get k less than 45. Then what will be the range of k? k must be greater than 0, less than 45 when time delay td is equal to 0. In the second case, we take time delay td is equal to 1 second. Then we need to approximate e power minus s td in the sense 1, therefore e power minus s e power minus s can be approximated as 1 minus s. So take that 1 minus s in the gh of s, that will be k into 1 minus s divided by s into s square plus 5s plus 9. Then if you find the characteristic equation 1 plus g is equal to 0, then you will be getting the equation as s cube 5 square plus 9 minus ks plus s plus k is equal to 0. Again it is third order, then we can easily form the row array. What are the elements of first two, uh, first two rows uh, from the equation we can write down here 1, 5, then this is going to be 9 minus k and this is k. Then how to find the next element? These two must be multiplied minus these two multiplied divided by this element. So or else directly you can take 9 minus k minus k divided by 5. Then what will be the last element? The last element you can take the k value you can substitute here. The last element is k. So this is your Routh's array when td is equal to 1 second after getting the characteristic equation. Now, what are the first column elements? Again, you can like look at the first column elements. 1, 5 is as it is like the previous one, but here there is a change. 9 minus k minus k by 5 and the last element is k. So, if you want to have system to be stable, uh, there should not be any sign changes or these two must be positive. k greater than 0 is a one condition we will be getting as usual and this condition is nothing but 9 minus k minus k by 5 greater than 0. When you simplify it, you will be getting k value as k less than 7.5. So in this case, k range is k must be greater than 0, less than 7.5. Now compare these two. When you compare these two, when td is 0, the k is 45. That means if you can vary the uh, gain k from 0 to 45, you have more flexibility. When it comes to time delay system, the flexibility reduced from 0 to 7.5 only. That means if it is greater than 7.5k value, system will be unstable. So whenever you have e power minus t term, so there will be a possibility of any stable system may become unstable. In this case, you can say that when k is 45 or less than 40, for example, k is 40 without a uh, time delay, system is stable only. But when uh, uh, one second of time delay is introduced, uh, even if your k is 40, system becomes unstable. So the flexibility of k value for variation is reduced uh, with the introduction of the time delay in the system. Having understood the concept of routh harwich criteria to find the stability of the system, let us look at some of the limitations of RH criteria, that is routh harwich criteria. So here we go. Um, the first one we can say the RH criteria can be used only for LTI system that is a linear time invariant systems. And the other one is uh, we know that if at all if the characteristic equation is in algebraic form then only we can use uh, Routh Arvich criteria. So if at all if you have e power term directly we cannot uh, find the stability using RH criteria we need to have intermediate. Uh, approximation that is just now I said uh, e power minus s can be approximated as 1 minus s. So uh, RH criteria needs a characteristic equation in the form of algebraic equation. And next we know that RH criteria will give us only the location of uh, it gives us only the number of poles in left of the s plane, right of the s plane and imaginary axis but exact location we cannot find out. And also we don't know uh, even if you have the poles in left of the S plane whether the real or complex. Next, 
we can find absolute stability using RH criteria. The exact relative stability we cannot find out. So we can find the relative stability only in some means, but we cannot find the relative stability margins using RH criteria. And similarly, uh, whenever there are special cases, then we need to take more care. Like uh, whenever you have one row with uh, first element zero or all the element zeros, then special care need to be taken. So these are the limitations of uh, Routh Harris criteria. Although we, we have the limitations, but RH criteria give us the promising results when you are finding the stability of the system.